Hello everyone, how are you all? Hope you all are doing good and revising all the concept of your advanced time series. Okay, so if a question is asking you to find whether MAQ process is invertible or not, so for that what you have to do? Okay, I'm going to start. So first of all, MAQ process can be written as MAQ process. So I'm writing here the process that we have studied in previous classes. It is written like xt is equals to mu plus et plus beta 1 et minus 1 plus beta 2 et minus 2 plus dot 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 beta q et minus q. Okay. So here what we can write xt minus mu is equals to et plus beta 1 et minus 1 plus beta 2 et minus 2 plus dot 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 up to this one beta q et minus q. Okay. <clears throat> so here. You can see uh, what we can take this side. Here we have xt minus mu is equals to et. Now it is representing that we can convert this et minus 1 like b of et. Where b is representing your backward shift operator. Then plus beta 2 then b square et. Then plus dot 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 up to so on. This is your beta q b to the power q and e of t right here beta 1 beta 2 are just uh, used as a constant value they are used for the notation only right so what i can do with this term i can write et minus mu is equal to so i can take this et 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 outside right so i am taking it outside and we have one at the first place we have beta 1 and b right plus we have beta 2 and b square then plus up to dot 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 what we have at the end we have this beta q and b to the power q is a we have this one and et as the common outside now you have this equation right so maq process is invertible if and only if the root of this equation this equation can be written as 1 plus beta 1 b plus beta 2 b square plus dot 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 up to beta q and b to the power q is equals to 0. So, this is your equation. So, maq process is said to be invertible if and only if the root of this whole equation is greater than 1 in, in its absolute value, right? So, just remember this shift operator can be con uh, can be taken as a random variable, not a random variable, it can be taken in an equation form. Like if I'm going to take z at the place of mm, these b's, right? So I can write 1 plus beta z plus beta 2 z square dot 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 up to this beta q and z to the power q is equals to 0. So we have to find the root of this quadratic equation in z, right? So this is your quadratic equation in z. So if the absolute value of this quadratic equation, which is in z, is greater than 1 then it this process is said to be invertible right so you have to remember this condition for a ma1q process is said to be invertible if all the roots not only one if all the roots of this characteristic equation is greater than 0 in its absolute value right now coming to a r m a p q process so it is called your arma PQ process, auto regressive moving average process. So I'm going to write down the process directly. It can be written as 1 minus alpha 1 B, then minus alpha 2 B square minus dot 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 alpha P B to the power P. XT minus Q, XT minus mu is equal to 1 plus beta 1 B plus beta 2 B square plus dot 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 beta Q B to the power Q. ET. Now, how I get this equation? Just remember, just remember the previous equations that we have discussed in last classes. Okay, so I am telling you that in last classes, we have studied ARMA PQ process like your XT is equals to mu plus alpha 1, XT minus 1 minus mu plus dot 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 up to alpha P, XT minus P minus mu, then plus ET plus beta 1, ET minus 1 plus beta 2 et minus 2 plus dot 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 beta q and et minus q so what i did with this equation i sent it this uh, value of mu to the left hand side so we have xt minus mu now again i send it the whole terms up to this side and leaving only these terms on the right hand side so what i have now i have this alpha 1 then i have xt minus 1 
माइनस म्यू देन माइनस डॉट 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 माइनस अल्फा पी एक्स टी माइनस पी माइनस म्यू इज इक्वल टू नाउ वी हैव दिस टर्म ऑन दी लेफ्ट हैंड साइड सो हेयर आई एम गोइंग टू कन्वर्ट दिस इक्वेशन इन टू दिस वन यूजिंग द सेम प्रोसीजर एज आई डिड राइट बिकॉज आई कैन यूज दिस बैकवर्ड शिफ्ट ऑपरेटर हेयर राइट सो एंड आई कैन ऑल्सो टेक आउटसाइड दिस ई टी दिस एर टर्म सो वट विल वट आई विल हैव वन प्लस बीटा वन बी प्लस बीटा टू बी स्क्वेर प्लस डॉट 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 बीटा क्यू बी क्यू एंड ई टी सो आई हैव दिस वन ऑन दी राइट हैंड साइड नो हेयर यू कैन सी वी हैव एक्स टी बट हेयर वी हैव एक्स टी माइनस वन नो अगेन फ्रॉम दिस वन आई कैन टेक आउट साइड दैट बैकवर्ड शिफ्ट ऑपरेटर एंड वी नो दैट बैकवर्ड शिफ्ट ऑपरेटर इज अफ्लाइड ऑन अ कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू इट गिव्स यू दिट सेम कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू राइट सो आई कैन टेक बैकवर्ड शिफ्ट ऑपरेटर फ्रॉम दिस ब्रैकेट सो वॉट आई विल हैव आई विल हैव फाइनली एक्स टी माइनस म्यू इन वन ब्रैकेट माइनस अल्फा वन b the backward shift operator outside and xt minus mu then minus dot 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 minus alpha p the backward shift operator to the power p then xt minus mu then is equal to the same term so finally you can see i can take outside this x minus mu so what i will have inside a bracket 1 minus alpha 1 then single backward shift operator then in the next term what i will have i will have this alpha 2 and backward shift operator is so square then minus dot 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 at the end i have this alpha p backward shift operator to the power p right and outside we have this common term xt minus mu right and here in the right hand side i have the same term so you can see we got this equation by just following these four steps right okay now after that this is your armma pq process okay so i'm Going to discuss a question with you. Therefore, the same process, Arma, not PQ, but Arma one one process, it is given to you, and you have to find the values of correlation, right? So I'm going to write down that question. You have to find what a correlation. So for Arma one one process, given as x t is equals to alpha. X t minus one plus e t plus beta e t minus one. This is Arma one one process. And what you have to find? You have to find the value of row one, row two, and row three. Okay. Now we all have seen that the value of gamma naught can be obtained. Gamma naught is equals to uh, gamma naught because we always use the value gamma naught, gamma one, gamma two, etc. In the formula of your autocorrelation, right? So gamma naught can be written as covariance of x t and x t because we have seen this value in previous classes. Okay, so at the place of x t, I'm going to write down some values. Covariance of x t at the place of x t, I can write this value. So we have alpha x t minus one plus e t plus beta e t minus one comma this x t, right? <clears throat> okay. Now again, using the property of covariance, uh, what I can write? I can write alpha covariance of x t minus one comma x t plus covariance of e t comma x t plus beta covariance of e t minus one comma x t right now here you can see we are having two terms but with of lag one so I can write down gamma one at the place of this covariance right just go through with the last two last classes that we have discussed. So at the place of this term, I can write gamma one, right? So here we are having e t and x t. So what will be the value of this term? The value of this term will be sigma square. Why sigma square? Okay, so I'm telling you why I put the sigma square here. So I'm going to do that calculation here. Covariance of x t and e t, right? So covariance of x t at the place of x t, what I can write? Alpha. x t minus one plus e t plus beta e t minus one comma this e t right now see we have e t here and we have e t here with lag zero right because rest of the values with some lag will be zero because we have read a property uh, property which is I'm going to write here that property covariance of e t and e t plus k is equals to sigma square when the value of lag is zero and zero and otherwise right so using this property. I am going to take this only e t and e t. Rest of the values will give you the value zero, right? So finally, what we have, we have these two terms. We have this covariance of e t and e t, right? So that is why the lag is zero. So the value of this term will be sigma square. That is why we have sigma square here. Okay, now we have this beta covariance of e t minus one and x t, right? So we have this beta, but at the place of this term, what we can write? We can write alpha plus beta sigma square. So how we can write this term here? So now going to solve this term, covariance of e t. First of all, I'm writing because it is your symmetric. You can say so. I can write down x t here and e t minus one here. 
right so at the place of xt what i can write i can write alpha xt minus 1 plus et plus beta et minus 1 comma this et minus 1 okay so so you can see uh, what we have here so first of all i'm going to expand using the property of covariance we have this alpha covariance of xt minus 1 et minus 1 right then plus beta beta then uh, we have this beta and covariance of et and et minus 1 right so covariance of et and et minus 1 will be your sigma square because the lag is zero so here i can write only sigma is square okay and the rest of the term you can see we are having lag between this term and this term so that term will be zero so i'm not going to write that term so finally here you can see we are having this xt minus 1 and et minus 1 basically we have to focus on the lag and here the lag is zero so the lag is zero so at the place of this term we can also write down the sigma square plus beta and sigma square so we have this alpha plus beta sigma square so that is why here we have the value alpha plus beta sigma square okay now we have the value of this equation which is your gamma naught so i'm keeping this inside the square so this is your equation number one now what we have to do next we have to find the value of gamma one gamma one means there should be a lag of one between the two values so covariance of xt and xt minus one so it can be written as gamma one but at the place of xt what we can write we can write alpha xt minus one plus et plus beta et minus 1 comma xt minus 1 now you have to find the value of this term so taking this along with this there's a lag 0 so we will have alpha and covariance of xt minus 1 xt minus 1 can be written in terms of this gamma naught right plus now you can see we can see at the place of these two terms we will get 0 but here we have the lag 0 so what we can write beta covariance of covariance with these two terms and lag 0 so we can write gamma sigma square right so this is our equation number two <clears throat> okay we have equation number one we have equation number two now i'm going to find out the value of gamma k okay what will be the value of gamma k gamma k is equals to covariance of xt and xt minus k right so covariance of alpha xt minus one plus et plus beta et minus one and xt minus k okay now gamma k will be equal to because here you can see uh, what we have finally we have okay we can take this value along with this xt right i'm taking this alpha and we have the same values xt minus 1 and xt minus 1 so these two terms can be written in terms of gamma right but with the lag of k minus 1 because here we have a difference of k here we have a difference of 1 so if i'm considering xt this term is also having xt this term is also having xt this there is a difference of 1 there it this term is having a difference of k so i can write down this term uh, this one in terms of gamma with the lag of k minus 1 rest of the terms will give you the value 0 right so that is why the value of gamma k will be alpha times gamma upon k minus 1 okay so we can uh, we can get the value of gamma naught by putting the value from equation 2 in equation 1 you can see we have the equation one we have the equation number two right because we are finding the value of gamma naught so what we have to do because we have the value of gamma one so what you have to do just put the value of this gamma one in this equation number one and you will get the value of gamma naught i'm going to write down the value of gamma naught directly just solve this problem in your copy and let me know are you all getting this value one plus two beta times alpha plus beta square whole upon one minus alpha square into sigma square right okay after that you have to find the value of gamma 1 so for that what you have to do you have to put the value of this equation number 3 put 3 in 2 after putting this value of 3 in equation number 2 you will get the value of gamma 1 and it should be your alpha plus beta 1 plus alpha beta whole upon 1 minus alpha square times sigma square right so solve this equation and this equation in your copy now we have the values of gamma naught and gamma 1 so what we have to do we have to find the value of rho 1 right because the question is asking us to find the value of row 1 row 2 and row 3 right so row 1 what is the formula of row 1 row 1 is equal to gamma 1 upon gamma naught this is the value of gamma 1 this is the value of gamma naught you have to solve it now similarly similarly you can find the value of gamma k so what will be the value of gamma rho k sorry rho k the formula of rho k is gamma k upon gamma naught so you have the value of gamma k right you have the value of gamma naught so you have to solve it by your own just do it by yourself right now okay